Hey everybody, Bloody Cosplay here, and I wanted to introduce to you the bane of my existence, Chainmail. This has been a project I wanted to use for my World of Warcraft armor, and it has taken me forever. It's taken a lot of time, a lot of effort, and really made my hands hurt. I've gotten blisters and calluses, all in the sake of authenticity for my cosplay costume. So, since this is so difficult, which you can see the video on how to do this um, on my channel if you want to check it out, uh, I'm going to show you some alternatives. So, that's what we're going to look about, look at, look about. That's what we're going to look at in this video is some chainmail alternatives. So, let's get started. I hate this stuff. Let's face it, chainmail is a lot of work. It's a lot of these type things. And after, I don't know, weeks of building things with these little rings, you come up with something like this, which is much more authentic for your costume, but it requires an awful lot amount of work. So we're going to look at an alternative that I think is acceptable, though it's not near as good as actual homemade chain mail. And this... It's a non-skid mat. You can pick these up at the dollar store, you can pick them up at Walmart, and basically all it is is a mat that you put something down on top and it really keeps things from slipping. And it's flexible. I'm not sure what it's made of, but it's pretty strong. It's uh, almost, a, I think it's a material covered in some kind of a rubber. And it has two sides. It has a bumpy side where it's got these little drippy bubbles, and it has a flat side. And we're going to use the flat side to work on. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to paint it, at which point we can affix it to material, um, we'll put this right down on the material we need it for whatever shape, and then we can attach both of those together to our costume to fill in any places where you need chain mail. But I'm going to do both of these pieces, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to start them both with black. I'm going to take them out to the garage and hit them both with a good layer of black paint. And then when I'm done with that, I'm going to highlight with silver and then cut to whatever shape we need. And this will be a good alternative for the chain mail. So just to see the process, um, well, I'm going to snap and uh, this will be all painted black. Magic. Okay, it's not magic. I just uh, took it outside. Did it brought it back and started the video again. I've already taken this and I've painted it black. Uh, I also took one of the ones that was black and I went ahead and hit that with the spray paint so you can get a comparison between the two. This one has a spray paint. It's a plastic spray paint so it is more flexible. It's the Krylon Fusion brand um, and there's other brand brands as well. But here is the finished product of this one. I can add some highlights if I wanted. Um, the, the black underneath was meant to give it a little bit of depth, but I think I went a little too heavy with the silver. I should have done a lighter dusting. That would have left some of the black behind. It's pretty much just silver now. But I think that'll work for a simpler alternative for chain mail. We're going to try with a little bit of acrylic paint and some rub and buff just to show you the differences. There's rub and buff, silver paint, and a brush. Now this just showing you there's more than one way you can do it. You can do the whole thing in spray paint, you can do the whole thing in acrylic, you can do the whole thing in rub and buff. But with rub and buff, the problem with that is not mixed very well. If you ever open your rub and buff and it comes out almost like a solid liquid, it's not mixed. Do whatever you can to mix it. There's not really a shaker ball in it. If it's full, you can't really knead it. But you need to try to do what you can to make sure it comes out more of a paste. There we go. Now you can see the difference between the paste and the runny. That wouldn't have really worked. So you want it in this thicker paste form. Now you can use a brush with rub and buff, but I I warn against it because it's very difficult to get out of a brush and you'll basically ruin your brushes. The easiest way to use it is just to use a finger and to just 
go over an area. Make sure you stretch this, not the material, the use of your rub and buff as far as it will go because a little bit will go farther than you think if you continue to work it into your material. And you only need to cover the tip of your finger. You don't need a glob on there or anything like that. Just a little touch, get some on your finger, which it does not come off your finger very easy either, but after a couple washings, it'll come off just fine. Okay, so we've got enough with the rub and buff just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Now this has a lot more of the black showing through in the background which gives it some texture but it also I don't know if it gives it as much realism because chainmail is basically solid metal it wouldn't have a lot of texture behind it a lot of different colors so use your own discretion when you're deciding what you're wanting to do with yours. Now the next thing I'm going to use is some silver paint. This is a little bit watered down. If you get it not watered, it'll probably work a little better. But this is what I have handy. I use this for my airbrushing. And I'm just going to rub it across the surface. To meet up with that rub and buff to see if we can see any transition between the two. I don't think we will. Now in comparison to the rub and buff, the rub and buff, it's very hard to see on the camera, but the rub and buff is much brighter than it is down here. However, this works. Both, so both of these alternatives work, um, I'm sorry, both of these techniques work if you're wanting to make some chainmail alternative from some of this non-skip matting. I think this works the best, which is the sprayed uh, silver over it just because it's faster it's simpler and it doesn't really take away much from the difference in in texture and uh, finished look so this can be used for our chain mail so there's you some alternatives instead of uh, letting your fingers turn into mashed potatoes from weeks of of using using them to try to connect things And the final alternative that I have for you comes from the internet. If you were to look at this picture, or this one, you would see that on the internet you can find material that is just basically cloth with a printed design. It appears to be three-dimensional and it looks like it in photos and from a distance, but upon closer inspection it's obviously just printed material. So it works if you're in a pinch for time and you need some material and uh, don't have the time to make chain mail or this alternative. Uh, so it's, it's a viable option. I prefer not to use it. I would rather use this because at least this is three dimensional. It's got some thickness to it and it will, um, it will sell a little better in photos and a little bit better up close than just the material. It's, uh, this is a whole lot cheaper and it's simple enough to do, so I highly recommend this for an alternative. But those are your choices. Of course, you can make it by hand, as I was doing here, which definitely sells much better than this, but it's very laborious and time intensive, and you can find that video on my channel as well on how to make chain mail. There you go, stay crafty. Hey there all you beautiful creative people out there in the internet land. Before you run off and create your very own awesome cosplay armor and props, click that subscribe button if you don't mind so you'll always be updated when new videos are released. Also, if you need more tips and tricks and tutorials, you can always stop by www.cccosplay.com for much more information and articles that are released on a regular schedule. And last but not least, stay crafty my friends.